How's it going everyone? Data here and welcome back to our NHL 23 franchise mode series here with the San Jose Sharks moving into what I would call episode number one, our official start with the team after having gone through the franchise overview in episode number zero and getting a lot of thoughts from you. Usually my time between episodes is a bit shorter, but of course in the episode zero, there are a ton of thoughts from the assistant general managers. We I had a ton of comments on YouTube, on Discord, even on a Reddit post that I had put. Many people adding their input for how this team should look personnel-wise and direction-wise. As we know, coming into San Jose here, the team is struggling for talent, I guess, for a lack of a better term. We got Hurdle, we got Meyer, we got Couture. After that, there is no player higher than an 83 overall for the forwards. On defense, we have Eric Carlson, who I added some X-Factors to because of the line chemistry. And after that, no defenseman higher than an 81 overall. Goaltending, thankfully, we have an 85 backed up by an 84. But aside from that, it is dicey here in San Jose. We do have have some interesting prospects in the system. William Eklund, Thomas Bordelot on defense, Ryan Merkley. So all things that we'll be keeping note of as we head into our first season with the Sharks. But our first season, you know, it begs the question. New general manager coming in, a team that has a lot of no movement clauses, players who aren't getting any younger. Are we going to try and perform well, get Timo Meyer impressed, have him signed on? Or are we thinking more of the sell direction and, you know, tanking for one of the top picks in the 2023 draft, such as Mishkov, Bedard, um, Fantilli, other generated prospects as well. Mishkov will likely go first overall in this draft, even though he won't go first in the real world, I don't think. Uh, because he's a creative player, I, I'm not sure why, but the game always makes the, them go before the real players. So it'll probably go Mishkov, Bedard, one and two. We'll see if we can get into that top three, or you no, know, maybe we don't want to be in there. So there, like I said, there was a ton of comments. I could spend literally a good half hour going through all of these. Some of them were books, some of them were quick thoughts, and I do very much appreciate all of them. I take the time to sit down and reply to every single comment that is left. I just can't always address them on screen because it would just take too much time. So all that being said, we'll dive into the comments, and I would say that the general theme of the comments, aside from excitement and support for the series, was... Yeah, we're probably going to be tanking slash trending downward, but it doesn't hurt to just see what this team can do before we start really selling off. Yes, there are some pieces that are more likely to be sold no matter what, but there's no need to make drastic moves before the season even starts. Let's see how they do, and maybe there's some EA magic in there. So diving into the comments, we see Ryan leaving the first one of this series. Massive Optimus Rhyme and EK65 fan, so I'm loving this. Tough situation with the guys like Carlson, though. You so desperately want to win now for them because of their potential. But sometimes when you love something, you must let it go. Getting poetic. I don't think it's worth it to not tank. The upcoming draft classes are so juicy and those few hideous contracts leave you very little wiggle room to try to turn this team around. I just try to prioritize what few prospects with potential we already have, Eklund for sure playing in the preseason, maybe more depending how he does, and see what contracts you can dump on some, you know, buyers maybe aren't so smart. As much as I do love Optimus Rhyme, it doesn't really make sense to me for a rebuilder to have two 84 plus overall goalies. And I'm sure a couple Cup contender would love to have a veteran 84 overall backup J Rhyme. This gives us the freedom to either expedite the development of one of our AHL goalies. I forgot to show that, so I'll do this right after this comment. Or sign slash acquire a younger backup who has room to grow and fits more into our timeline. Great vid as always, Data, and super excited for this series. Thank you very much, Ryan. Headed into the uh, in the system goaltenders, the one thing I forgot to do last episode. We don't have much, but there is some value for sure. Aaron Dell never really going to become much more than he already is, but there is Itu Makanyemi. Now, Makanyemi came from the Carolina Hurricanes in the Brent Burns trade, fourth round pick in 2017. A 23-year-old with low fringe starter potential, already a 78 overall, so I could see him being a backup 
to Kapokakinen sooner rather than later. We also have Straussmann, undrafted 24-year-old, medium backup potential. And we have a couple other uh, fringe starter type guys. Zachary Imont, sixth round pick in 2018. And uh, Benjamin Goudreau, who is a third round pick in 2021. A couple of French Canadians. As well as another unsigned guy, Ma uh, Mason Bopti. So three, actually, I, I would assume that's three French Canadians right there. So very interesting uh, crew of individuals. No one who's really going to be stealing the crease, I don't think. But I would say that McIniemy could be a guy that we promote to the NHL. If, uh, you know, if, if Reimer leaves and Dell goes up, the longer term backup solution may be him. Happy Krogan leaving a comment. Very happy that you picked my favorite team for this year. Hey, more than happy to accommodate. The people have spoken. But I think if we want to keep it somewhat realistic, we have to expect to be really bad for a while. We might need to wait some of these contracts out until we can buy them out, or it makes sense for other teams that are tanking to pick them up. For example, I don't think anyone would be willing to trade for Mark Edward Vlasic. Understandable. He is more of a buyout candidate as soon as he does not have that many years left. Also for Kevin LeBant, we'd probably have to add a sweetener in a trade getting rid of him, but I really would not want to give up any draft picks or prospects as the Sharks desperately need them. It hurts a lot, but maybe you should consider trading Timo Meyer at the deadline. He has good trade value and it would be hard to keep him without getting even worse. Also, not a native English speaker, so I hope it wasn't too hard to read. Not hard at all. Well done. Great comment and thank you for that input. There were a few comments saying maybe Timo Meyer can stay obviously we would love him to but if we're trending that way towards the end of this episode around the halfway point it will be a consideration mike leaving a comment data my man been waiting for this excited to see how this goes thanks for being here mike i'd say leave the roster as is and assess at the deadline if the team is competing then go all in for the older guys and give them a chance for a playoff run maybe you know maybe there's some cinderella magic if not maybe sell some pieces and tear it down I think this roster is unfortunately mediocre. I'm pumped for Eklund though. Maybe he slips into the lineup near the deadline depending on the state of the team. He didn't go to Mike's Red Wings, but we have him here on the Sharks. That's his assessment. Leave your lines how we have them and let it rip. Let's assess at the deadline. Take care, brother. Let's go Sharks. Thank you very much, Mike. Comment coming from NoGuard. First time watching one of your franchise mode series live and I'm excited. I'm excited for you to be here. Thank you for leaving the comment. I'd say you give the guys a few games to assess what are your needs. Even if most of your bottom six guys, you know, low 80s, high 70s, who knows? They might play great and become regular third or fourth line guys. A top four D to play on the second pair to help out your goalie, slash a second line forward might also add, would be a good immediate trade and give you some assets at the trade deadline to fit the direction of the team. Shatton Kirk, Captain Kirk, might be a decent option since he's probably cheap. Otherwise, Severson would be great if they don't ask for too much, New Jersey meaning. Good luck, live long and prosper, GM data. Live long and prosper, my friend. Thank you very much. Moving on to Tic Tac, who echoes a lot of the same thoughts. Even if we wanted to tank, the majority of these contracts are too tough to move, even without the no movement clauses. Why not give it up until the deadline to see how the lineup comes together and then decide whether it's rebuild time or retool time. A very well-balanced approach, Tic Tac. Aside from those comments, there were so many other great ones. A lot of them also making mention of some of the players that we've seen on the trade blocks. Like, in, like especially if we're moving, be moving Timo Meyer, we have value to play with. Matt Coronado over on the block in Calgary. Um, in Minnesota, we see uh, Spurgeon, Brodeen, Dumba all on the block there as well. I think in New Jersey, we see Damon Severson. So there are some very interesting options should we decide to sell slash move the bigger value guys. Because obviously, if we're moving Laban and uh, Reimer, we're not quite getting that type of value. But all things to be kept in mind. And with all of that understood, what I'm going to go ahead and do right now before we can start simulating is sign some free agents. We could use a little bit of depth both in the NHL, but especially in the AHL. Alex Formenton currently an RFA still out here, but if I look at the two-way players who are here, a uh, fan favorite, a lot of people have been commenting about him, Jumbo Joe Thornton, 43 years of age. He has not retired. Whether we're tanking or not, it would be a good passing of the torch kind of story. Bring Jumbo Joe back for his final season. 
pass the torch to William Eklund, Thomas Bordelow, all these other players who are on the team. After a couple seasons away and not finding that Stanley Cup, he may not ever get it, unfortunately. That breaks our hearts. But the least we can do is give him one last season. We could use the forward depth, honestly. I, you know, Steven Lorenz at a 77 is our 13th forward. So I wouldn't mind him at all. I think it makes perfect sense. And hopefully he retires with the team and then we can sign him as a coach. So Jumbo Th Joe Thornton is going to receive a contract at 43 years of age. Crazy to think that he is still around. Maybe he's not playing this season. I hope he will. But we're going to give him the contract. We're going to reach out to him. GM Data has connected with Joe Thornton before. So let's try and get it done. Now, looking at other two-way players, I wouldn't mind a Victor Rask kind of guy. He might be, be a little too good, though. As I'm, gonna be, I'm thinking about guys who would help in the AHL because the roster in the AHL is rough. Especially to have a guy who Ryan Merkley could play with, perhaps. That would be ideal. So I'm going to do a little bit of research. I'm going to sign a few guys. Maybe a Danny DeKaiser, a Michael Kempney. Just get a little bit of value out here because Veracuda needs some support. So maybe some, you know, maybe a Dominic Cahoon type of guy. I'm going to send out a few offers to them. I'm going to send out a few offers to some scouts. And then we'll start advancing in the calendar. All right, so ready to advance a couple of days now. We have the preseason about to start, but let's see what we can do. We're going to get, uh, I think, I, I nine scouts. I have new offers going out to them, and then I'll start doing the scouting off screen myself. Nothing has changed between NHL 22 and 23 for scouting, and little, very little change from 21 to 22 as well. So if you've seen my scouting tutorials, I'll put out a new one as well this year, but if you've seen them before, very little has changed. I'm not going to show you what I do because it's just like 20 minutes of me sending out scouts. Uh, concerning the line, so we've reached the first game the preseason without any of our players that we signed in free agency coming to the team basically i'm going to keep the lines exactly as they are but i'm going to slot in william eckland he's the only guy who i'm going to give a chance to everyone else is going to stick around in the ahl already eckland's a bit of a stretch at a 77 but hey you know what if he can prove himself against some other 78s and 79s I wouldn't mind keeping him. That's the only thing we're deciding this preseason. I'm not going to waste our time going through each game slowly. I'm going to show you the stats at the end of the preseason. So I'll fix up the lineup, get these games over with, and I'll interrupt when we see that the free agents have signed on. Advancing another day forward, some more scouts signing on. Uh, Cole Fonstad, welcome to the team. There's one of our free agent signings. We beat Anaheim 3-2, by the way. Uh, oh, roster is full. Uh, how do you like that? My apologies. Same for Victor Rask, same for Danny DeKaiser, same for Sammy Niku. My apologies. Let me take care of that, then we'll try it again. Boston House, a seventh round pick for these three guys who are not even going to be making the team in the AHL. Yeah, it doesn't, <laughs> not up to snuff at all. Three guys for a seventh and they don't want to do it. Basically, can I swap you a seventh round pick and you do me a favor by taking these guys? Thank you. For, uh, oh, if, you, if I didn't accept this offer of yours, the Bruins fans would call for my resignation. All right. Thank you very much. One more trade. Cardwell to Tampa for a seventh. Rejected value isn't up to snuff at all. So how about I give you that Boston seventh? that I just got, and we make it a Tampa 7. Oh, such a good deal for us here in Tampa. Ah, I really hope you know what you're doing. Okay, if I don't couch it, merci beaucoup. Let's keep on simulating and get those players signed on. 7-1 win against Vegas, oh my goodness. Continue simulating. Joe Thornton, welcome back, baby. Extremely happy to accept the offer. Cash offer most generous, blah, blah, blah. Welcome back, Bello. Victor Rask is on board, who will be depth slash AHL. Danny DeKaiser and Sammy Niku, who are both going to be AHL, also on board. I was a big fan of Sammy Niku when he played in Montreal, so he still has a top four D potential. Let's see what he does. 5 nothing shutout against the Kings. Okay, that's what we like to see. All right. Uh, last uh, one more game here against the Kraken. 5-1 win. Keep it rolling. Tough 7-4 loss, but then a 5-1 win. Kevin LeBan has 10 points in 6 games. And the Calgary Flames last game here, we lose 3-1. So, wow. We go 5-2-0 and oh in the preseason. Not too shabby. Eric Carlson puts 11 points together. Why not? LeBan has 4 goals and 10 points. Lindblom, 8. Couture, 7. Kunin, 6. Meyer, Hurdle, Eklund, five points in seven games for William Eklund. Not bad. I'm, we might start him off uh, in the NHL to start the season. I don't want to stunt his growth, but we might try it out. Shveshnikov, Barabanov is the one who struggled the, the most, probably, you know, playing top line minutes. Sturm, Ferraro, Benning, Nudivara, Vlasic with a nice assist. Okay, and goaltending. Kakinen went 5 1 and 0 oh, with some wild numbers. So, all right, the former Wild putting up some wild numbers. 
Let's sim to the first game of the preseason, fix the rosters, who's going to be where, and then we'll get this party started. All right, so for the opening night roster for the 2022-23 season, I think this is how we're going to roll. We did very well in the preseason, so no need to really touch anything. Barbanov wasn't great, but the second line was too good to break up. Lindblom, Couture, and Eklund. I'm going to give him his nine-game tryout. We'll see what happens. Defense as well. I'm not going to touch anything there. Carlson did all right. I'm pretty content. Um, Nikolai. I, I pronounced it Kinezov last episode, but someone left a comment. I believe it's pronounced Nizhov. So please let me know if I'm doing that right. Nikolai Nizhov. Uh, he's, he was playing top pair with Carlson. I thought it was Mario Ferraro, but I guess the computer had changed it. So, all right, works for me. If that, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now looking at the goaltenders, of course, Kakinen. He has a playable injury, but should be okay to go by the time the season gets rolling. In the AHL, we're going to roll Gajevic, Rask, Bordelot on the first line. Raska, Reedy, Ozzy, Weisblatt, former first round pick. I boosted his potential from medium top nine to high top nine. I believe in him, not as much, maybe not top six, but I believe high top nine is a fair potential for him. Uh, Gushin, Gushin, Weatherby, and Lorenz on the third. Ham Hamaliuk, Fonstad, and Ibragimov. Ibra Ibragimov on the fourth line. Uh, Danny the Kaiser and Ryan Merkley on the first deep pair. Niazev, Kniazev. I'm going to go with Niazev playing with Nico on the second pair. And Hataka with uh, medium top 60 potential. Hataka will attack with Scott Harrington on the third pair. Goaltending, I'm going to put Aaron Dell third goalie. Probably just going to trade him for whatever we can get. Not a big fan of him anyways with the Drake Batherson thing when he threw him into the boards. Say what you will about Drake Batherson, but it was a pretty dirty play. Itu Makanyemi uh, will be starting in the AHL, the future heir to Antti Niemi. And uh, Strauss Mann will back him up. So in the NHL, by the way, for us to mention, healthy scratches, we have 13th slash 14th forward being Thornton and Nieto with CMEC being the seventh D-man. So obviously not a championship roster, but we had a great preseason. The scouts have been sent out. We're ready to rock and roll and see what this team can give us. The season opens at Bridgestone Arena in Nashville, a team that went 5-1-1 one, and one in the regular season. So it's not going to be easy. We play them on the road, then we play them at home the next night. Game one of the GM data era beginning here in Nashville. Game one, season one. Let's hit it. First period, 3-1 Sharks. Logan Couture opens up on the power play. The captain opening up the season for the new general manager. Trendon ties it back up. But then Sturm and Carlson give us the two-goal lead after 20. Second period now, 3-3. Three, three. Ooh, back-to-back -back power play goals for Jeannot and Johansson. Shots are 18-17 for San Jose, but the game is tied at three. Final 20 minutes now. It is a tie game, and the next goal could be what decides it. We're halfway through the third with no one scoring yet. Sharks pulling away in the shots a little bit. 26-22. Final five minutes now. It's a power play Nashville, but this time we kill it off only to let them score a few seconds later. Oh, no. We allow three unanswered. And from a 3-1 lead to a 4-3 loss. Shots end 32-27 in our favor. But we lose by one. Tough break. But we're playing well. I'm happy to see it. We're going to keep going till we get our first win. Our first game at home. Maybe that'll do the magic for us here at the Shark Tank in San Jose. Let's dive in for the season opener. Let's see what we can do here at the Shark Tank against the team that just beat us the night prior. First period, nothing going for either team. Second period, 1-0 San Jose as Kevin LeBas opens it up on the power play. Shots are 24-22 for San Jose, and we're up by one headed in the third. Make it up by two as Tomas Hurdle makes it 2-0. And Tomas Hurdle, his second of the night in as many minutes. Power play San Jose again. It's an extended one. This time killed off by the Predators. Pa power play Nashville killed off by the Sharks' penalty killers. Shots are 36-25. Thanks to two goals from Tomas Hurdle in the third period. We're now up by three with just three minutes to go. Zach Sanford, too bad, breaks the shutout for James Reimer. But Optimus Rhyme makes 28 saves and we win 3-1 for the home opener. Great stuff. 
Tomas Hurdle with two goals and an assist, 28 saves from James Reimer, and Logan Couture, our captain, adding the two assists. Lovely stuff. Great effort through the first couple of games. We outscore the Predators 6-5 to five over those two games, and we go 1-1, one one, not too shabby. Four points in two games from Tomas Hurdle. And now we can get into some calendar simulation. So I'm going to do, you know, those nine games for William Eklund. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We'll see. His final game will be against Vegas. Vegas, and then we'll decide whether or not he will stay on the team for the season. All right, so through eight games, we have an interesting record, 3-2-3. Three, three. We beat the Hurricanes, lost in a shootout, lost in overtime, lost to the Rangers 7-4, to four. Regulation win, then an overtime loss to Philly. We've been scoring goals, but we're allowing a lot as well. So we're 3-2-3. The Vegas Golden Knights are 4-3-0. and oh. This is the first of many games we'll have against Vegas here in the Pacific Division. So let's see what we can do. And hopefully William Eklund has been doing well enough to stick around. First period, 1-0 Sharks. It's Timo Meyer. Second period, 2-0 Sharks. It's uh, Nijov. I gotta try and get that. Shots 25-21. Rare goal from him as well so great to see that two nothing on the power play we are not and it gets killed off but oh on one more power play mixing up my words here thank you very much and those are both killed off but we're still up by two halfway through the third out shooting vegas by five 30 to 25 with about five minutes to go and shveshnikov makes it three to nothing as you can put this one to bed but is it going to be a you know what and yes it will be 28 save shutout for whoever was between the pipes tonight it was james optimus rhyme rhymer 28 save shutout for the beast a goal for meyer a goal and an assist for evgeny shveshnikov 3-0 victory, and we are now 4-2-3 and three through those nine games. Let's see what William Eklund has done. All right, so through nine games, Tomas Hurdle has 10 points, and so does Eric Carlson, both over a point per game. Love to see that. Timo Meyer with eight, and William Eklund with eight of his own. Three goals and five assists in nine games. Eight points for the rookie. I think we got to keep him. I put this to be on-call assistant general managers in the Discord server. I think we got to keep him because we were saying, you know, around that point every other game area, 0.5 points per game, that would be good. So if he was scoring maybe four or five points, that would be impressive. He's at eight points through nine games. I think we're going to keep him for the season. It's tough in EA land to try and figure out what's good for growth, but... I'm very impressed by William Eklund right now. Logan Couture, his centerman, seven points on the second line. Alexander Barabanov, two goals and seven points for him. Nijov, in nine games, has four goals as a defensive defenseman. Last season, in what, 56 games, he had two goals. He had two goals in his 59-game NHL career. In the last nine games, he has four goals and six points. Amazing. Shveshnikov, five. Lebas slowing down four. Lindblom, only four assists. Kunin, Sturm, Benino, all a couple points there. Vlasic has a goal. Gregor, Benning, Nudivera, Ferraro, negative two. Okay, okay. And goaltending, Kakinen. Oh, actually, it's been Reimer who's been playing a lot. My goodness, he's 3-0-2 with a shutout. 9-0-9 save percentage and 2.36 goals against average. While Kakinen has been 1-2-1 with a sub-900 save percentage and allowing three and three-quarter goal, goals per game. Wow, it's a very small sample size. I really just stopped to see William Eklund, but I'm okay to keep simulating like this. So I'm going to say let's go back to the calendar and see what else this team has. So may as well get another little chunk done here. No reason to just go a week at a time or whatever. Let's just start simulating and see what happens. About a month's worth of games, and we'll just see where the universe takes us. The Maple Leafs are 6-2-0. and We face them at home, and we win 3-1. to Tampa Bay Lightning, I'm sure they have a good record as well. Yeah, they beat us 5-2, to two, understandable. Little Pacific Division rival there against the Ducks, who are 7-1-2. and two. They beat us 2-1. to one. Panthers, they beat us 5-2. to two. We're starting to rack up a few L's here, unfortunately. Uh, Kevin LeBond, mild concussion. Wasn't doing much anyways. But this will pave the way for Joe Thornton. Welcome back into the lineup. Let's get... Uh, Let's make him fourth line center. Not a ton of ice time. I'll mix around the lines a little bit. And there we go. He doesn't have a good line fit, but I don't really care, honestly. Sturm, Thornton, and Gregor will be on the fourth line. Uh, I, won't, I guess I won't do much more than that. He's not gone for long, uh, Kevin LeBan. But he's replacing him in all lines. So I guess he has a little power play time as well. Big Joe. And Danny the Kaiser, the head coach, can do that down in the AHL. The injury glitch is still here. I see, and he's already back. 
can hold on continue and stop simulating the injury glitch is always where the calendar decline does not update to where you actually are until you stop the simulation so thorn didn't even get to play yet so we're gonna give him a game come on we'll give him the uh i'm not gonna give him the whole road trip but uh let's give him the back-to-back -back and we'll get Lebon back in for the games against minnesota so on the road my goodness head coach replace on the road against st louis Take on the Blues, who are 5-6-0. Oh, we lose in overtime 3-2. And on the road against Dallas, we get shut out 2 to nothing. Yikes. So now we're 5-7-4. and four. Let's see how Jumbo did. You're on the fourth line with some power play action. Two games, no points. Averaging about nine minutes of ice time per night. All right, nothing too crazy. But Joe, it was great to see you. And I'm sure that you will be back again soon. We'll get LeBon back in the lineup. Who hasn't been great. He's definitely a trade candidate. He's been on and off the block in the real world the last few years. Uh, one goal in 14 games. Yeah, fans are going to start calling for him. Uh, the scoring has definitely dried up a little bit. Goaltending, what's up? Reimer still starting more games. No, Kakin is playing a lot, but he's not doing very well. So, back to the calendar. So, maybe, I don't know, maybe we're a better slow sim team. Let's try taking on the Wild, who are 10-3-1 on the road against a better team, but James Reimer in nets for a slow sim. Let's see if that has anything to do with it. First period, bang, 2 nothing. Meyer and Sturm. All right. Second period, 3-2. Hartman and Boldy tie it up. Then Hurdle restores the lead for us. We're being outshot 26-24, but we're up by one here in the third period. Power play in Minnesota early on, killed off by the Sharks. Five minutes through, the shot's continuing to be a bit of a larger gap in favor of the of the, um, of the Wild. Halfway through the period now, shot's 35-29 mini with about five minutes to go. And Middleton ties it up 3-3 three, three. in the final three minutes of this one. Is there a hero late or will we see overtime? Yes, we will. Shot's 39-34 Minnesota in the three-on-three -three overtime. Now, a lot of space out there on the ice. Let's see some magic. Nothing comes from that. And in the shootout, we take it with Logan Couture scoring the winner. Shot's 40 to 35 in the end for Minnesota. Although we won in the in the slow sim, it was definitely a closer game, but we'll take it against a very good opponent. Six, seven, and four is now our record as we will continue to simulate. Nice little calendar glitch here where it's showing us that playing it's showing that we're playing against the Tucson Roadrunners in the top right corner there, even though we're in the NHL. Ontario Rain. Yeah, just go ahead and switch the team that we played against. The Kings, are they going to swap? Yeah, they switched to uh, Vegas's team. Can you stop simulating, please? And all these injuries, uh, we've had nothing in the NHL, thank goodness, but the AHL's injuries every two seconds. Okay, back to the calendar now. It's been a nice little stretch here. We beat the Golden Knights, lost in the shootout to the Red Wings, then win, shot loss, win, win, win. We haven't lost in regulation for a little while now since that 2 nothing loss against the Dallas Stars. I know we're probably going to do, be due for one very soon, but we're 11 7 and 6 headed into the month of December. Let's keep simulating on. No need to stop at any game in particular, I don't think. A little Eastern Conference road swing. 1 nothing shutout loss against the Montreal Canadiens. 3 2 loss. Lost in overtime against the Maple Leafs. Tomas Hurdle, yikes, sprained ankles. Now that hurts. First line centerman taking an injury. Thankfully not for long and Logan Contour can slot right in. But the rest of the lineup is uh, definitely suffering. So I'd almost just put Thornton in the second line role to keep having from having to change anything else up too much. Thornton playing second line with Lindblom and Eklund. You know what? Why not? Past the present slash future playing together. 19 years of age, 43 years of age. Let's do it. Of course, when you say replace in all lines, it never actually replaces in all lines. So Thornton can go here as well. A little PP1. Why not? Let's put him in there. Uh, then you got to put him on the formats. This is why I turned injuries down. I'll show you this once, I'll do the rest, I'll always do it off camera just to save you the, the suffering that I have to go through. But you say replace in all lines, and it does not replace in all lines. So what is the point of giving that feature if I need to go through, and it does for some of them, like I don't need to touch the pounding kill or any of that, but the power plays weren't done. So sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, certain ones it does, certain ones it doesn't. Very annoying. We lose against the Senators 5-3, to three, but then beat the Sabres 3-1. to one. Uh, let's keep going. Maybe another game against the, actually another Pacific rival. Let's go see the Kings. Maybe something like that. Let's just see until, uh, Tomas Hurdle comes back. Thank you. Good year for rookies. Thank you, amateur scout. Let's keep on going. Bordello is back. Okay, great. Lineups are set in for the Barracuda. All right. Vancouver Canucks. 
Uh, that glitch going to happen again where it changes the team if you change uh, the roster. They don't even show us the results of the games. And uh, yeah, and it changes the teams that we're playing against. Yeah, stop the sim, change back, and you go AHL, you go NHL. The <laughs> glitches just keep coming. 4 3 shootout win, followed by a 3 2 regulation loss. for 13 10 and 7, taking on the Coyotes. Are they a losing team? Yeah, 11, 12, and 4. 2 1 win right there. Thank you very much. I'll actually keep going to the game against the Calgary Flames. Our winning team, plus this is probably the last game with Jumbo Joe on the second line. 2 1 win against the Coyotes and a 1 0 shootout shutout win. Both goalies getting a shutout, a very rare occurrence in the NHL. We are 15, 10, and 7, taking on the 16, 14, and 1 Calgary Flames. Probably the last game that Jumbo Joe gets before he'll take his leave of absence for a little bit here. Relax, get the oxygen tanks going, and uh, recuperate a little bit. First period, 0 0. Second period, shots were 19 to 4. And the second period, we're now up 1 0. What? Being outshot 27 to 6. And we're up by 1. Oh my goodness, we're like being outshot by five times the amount. That's incredible. one nothing San Jose here in the third period. Calgary giving it everything she's got, but the Sharks hang on to their one goal lead. When can we hit the 10 shots? It only took 50 minutes to hit uh, 10 shots, double digits. Manjapane ties it up after they take over 30 shots. Understandable. Power play, Calgary late. We kill it off. Will this game see overtime? Yes, it will. Shots 37 to 12. And we're off to overtime. Oh my goodness, tripling the shots. And the Sharks win in overtime! Eric Carlson gets the winner. Shots end 37 to 14. But the Sharks squeak out a probably undeserving victory, all thanks to Capo Kakinen making 36 saves. Carlson the game winner. Timo Meyer with one as well. Huge victory right there. And Tomas Earl should now be back in the lineup. We did pretty well without him, I do have to say. And we're going to be facing Calgary again in a couple of days. They'll want to get revenge. And we'll have a fully healthy lineup. No, not yet. I thought we would have. But not quite yet. Let's keep on simulating until Hurdle is back. Uh, at home to take on Calgary once more. And now he is back. So he had no points in the first two games of the season, but in the next seven games, he scored two assists. Love it. Jumbo Joe, two assists in the last seven games of second line center. Negative two, but getting a good amount of ice time. Always good to keep the body moving in retirement or close to retirement. We'll give him a little break now, get Hurdle back in the lineup and back to simulation. Lineup's good to go. Joe, uh, Logan Couture back on the second line with Eklund and Lindblom. 2-1 overtime win against the Flames there. 4-1 loss in Hurdle's first game back against the Minnesota Wild. We're getting close to the halfway point, which is where we'll be stopping for this episode. Game 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, and 41. This game against the Bruins will be where we pause. They're a very good team right now, but that'll be the halfway point so we can figure out how what we're on pace to do. 4-3 win against the, the um, Vancouver Canucks. A 5-0 shutout victory. My goodness, against the Philadelphia Flyers. On the road against Dallas. Not sure what happened there. On the road against Chicago, we get pummeled 7-2. Couple more games to go here on the road against Anaheim, and then we'll be at home to take on the Bruins. 3 2 victory, and the game against Dallas was a 3 1 loss. We are 20, 13, and 7. Are we going to be on pace for 40 wins or for 42 wins after the halfway point here against the 26, 8, and 4 Boston Bruins? A very good team, but hey, we are second in the Pacific right now. We're looking all right. First period action 3 0 Sharks! Oh my goodness! Carlson, Meyer, and Eklund. Sheesh. Second period, 3-2. to two. We've seen this before. Brad Marchand and Derek Forbord. Two goals a minute apart in the final three minutes there. 3-2 Sharks after 40. Third period now. Can we extend the lead with a power play? Yes, we can. It's the second of the night for William Eklund. 4-2 San Jose. Final 12 minutes to go. Hold on, there's Jake DeBrus making it a one-goal game once again. Final 10 minutes now. Shots 32-25. Power play Boston killed off. Final. Ooh, Nick Foligno ties it up at four. It's a tight game in the shots and the scoreline. Final 30 seconds. We're headed to overtime. Perfect to, time to jump in. Shots tied at 33 and score tied at four. In overtime here at the Shark Tank at the SAP Center in San Jose. Three on three action. Look at those beautiful jerseys. Let's get that win number 21 and be on pace for 42. Here we go. Big hit there from Hurdle. Hold on. Marshawn can't pickpocket him. Carlson picks it up. I'll probably turn off 
little X-Factors above people's heads. This is the first time I go in-game for NHL 23 franchise mode. Tomas Hurdle. Here we go. I hope the volume is okay as well. Timo Meyer with an opportunity on net. Can't get it through. Pasternak skates. Brad Marchand back the other way. Leading the charge and finding himself a little bit open ice. Nice little bit of stick handling there. Slips by one-timer. Pasternak stopped by James Reimer who slides across the crease. McAvoy on net. Can't get through traffic. Timo Meyer finding his way out. Leading the charge for San Jose. Across to Eric Carlson. Has a lot of open space. But on net Bello in front. No shot results from that play, unfortunately. Here's Carlo. Don't let him just walk in. There we go. There's a little bit of defense there from Logan Couture. Very nice. Couture up to Carlson and across to Barabanov. Here we go. A little three-on-one rush. Barabanov put a uh, windmills nobody. Gives it to Couture and it can't even get through traffic once again. That's fighting for it. Couture gets away with it. Now he's on a breakaway. The game on his stick in front of the home fans. The captain is stoned by Olmark. Oh, wow. What an opportunity there for Logan Couture. Now Boston going back the other way. Three on three action. Incredible stuff right now. Carlo can't squeeze it in and Reimer will hang on. League leaders Timo Meyer in hits 88. Wow. I love that graphic. That's like the one thing that I've enjoyed with NHL 23. I love those little graphics uh, between face-offs. Uh, face off winner by Krejci. McAvoy can't get it through. Now Lindblom. Now he has a breakaway that Couture couldn't convert on. A little... Mm, that was a weird one. And by the way, it's Swayman and Nets, not Allmark. Had some space. Slowed down. McAvoy caught up to him. And it was a wrist shot from distance that uh, Swayman saw a lot of. Brad Marchand moving up to second in team points. I like that? Yeah, I like the graphic. I like it. I'm in the corner now. It's Lindholm. In front. Hold on. Nivara! Oh, just why the net. And Swayman was scrolling for that one. What an unlikely candidate. Nivara pushes Kreitsch up the puck. I didn't really touch the, the three on three lines because of how they, well they did in the preseason. Zaka scores, of course. <laughs> Uh, but I should probably fix it a little bit, like Noah Gregor, Nudivara on the third uh, unit there for the three-on-three. Three. I'll probably fix it up a little bit. There are some new graphics for when a team wins in overtime and stuff like that. Woohoo! Dance up and down. Bruins win in overtime, but we do get the point. All right, so after that one, we now have a record of 20, 13, and 8 through 41 games, putting us on pace for a record of 40. 26 and 16, which would also be enough to give us 96 points. I think that should be more than enough to give us a comfortable playoff spot in the Pacific Division. We currently sit second in the Pacific with those 48 points. The Anaheim Ducks are above us. Looking at the entire NHL up until this point, the Bruins are number one in the league, so hey, overtime loss against them can't be too embarrassing, right? In the entire league, we are currently 10th. Halfway through the season, we are 10th. All right. Scoring 2.714, but 2.73 being allowed against. Not ideal numbers. The power play is at 19.1%, which is actually fourth best in the NHL. And the pony kill is at 89%. Wow, which is fifth best in the league. So our special teams have been amazing. That's probably why we've been winning more games than our goals for and against would tell you. But uh, I don't know, do we want to try and make the goals for and against follow suit or say, no, we're a bit too inflated. We should probably just let it, you know, do its course from here. Timo Meyer and Logan Couture are tied for the team lead with 29 points in 41 games. William Eklund, 26 points on pace for a 52-point rookie season. Love to see that. Eric Carlson has 26 as well. Kevin LeBon woke up big time, 22 points in 39 games. He's on pace for something like 45+. plus. Tomas Hurdle, 22 in 34. Barabanov, 21. Kunin, 21. Lindblom, 19. Love it. Shveshnikov, Bonino, Kine, uh, uh, Nizov, Nizov, excuse me. Nudevara, Benning, and Nizov, by the way, six goals on the year. Vlasic, three goals, nine points, negative four. Gregor, eight. Sturm, seven. Ferraro, three. Thornton, those two points in nine games. And goaltending after 41 games, we have 14, 11, and 5 being the record of Capo Kakin with two shutouts. His numbers got much better 915 save percentage and 2.57 goals against. And James Reimer is 6, 2, and 3 with one shutout, 901 save percentage, 2.82 goals against average. All right, so now as we look to close things off, just a quick look at the entire NHL. Austin Matthews leading the way with 54 points in 40 games. Hopefully the low shooting, high scoring thing will work out a little bit. The goaltenders, it's they're, some of them are going to suffer a bit more than they should probably. Shesterkin's numbers aren't great, but Vasilevsky's are pretty solid. I'm trying to get the better goalies to do better. And that's hard in EA land where overall 
Charles don't mean much. But here are the top goalies in the league. And rookie skaters, Eklund, where is he? He is leading rookie scoring with Shane Wright right behind him. All right, good stuff. Very nice to see at the halfway point. The last piece of business will be to check out the trade blocks around the NHL. Depending on what direction we go in, maybe we're looking for prospects, maybe we're looking for picks. Many teams have their picks up for grabs. Uh, we'll see that as we, uh, we won't see as we scroll through, but it, you know, it's not like we have to go after one team's pick. We can just say in general, let's look for a first, let's look for a second, because many teams are open to trading their draft picks at this point. So on the Anaheim Ducks, we see John Klingberg, Cam Fowler, Kevin Shatton, Kirk, who's on the block. 83 overall for him expiring deal nah. all right five goals eight assists plus four playing a lot of ice time out there uh john klingberg expiring deal 26 points on the year he takes a lot of ice time as well so some defensive options here in anaheim you know that's what we would need probably on the blue line nemeth in arizona boston stunica who just got traded actually uh, as i was recording this lysel henestroza in buffalo and by the way if you have any questions about these players on the block you want to know more about them leave a comment with a question here on youtube or on the discord server Matt Coronado, how's he done down in the AHL? Seven goals, 14 assists so far in 31 games, currently injured. And Connor Zary, 25 points in 31 games for the centerman. Very interesting. Carolina Hurricanes, we see Drury, Suzuki, Gundler, no one in Chicago. Colorado has Lekkanen on the block, five years at 4.5. Currently has only 14 points in 39 games. Hmm. Martin Kaut also on the block. Uh, Voracek, Nyquist, Jenner, Goodbranson all on the block in Columbus. Nobody in Dallas. Detroit has Perron, Cop, Sherratt, lots of names here, uh, but none on expiring deals. Uh, but we could think about guys who are here longer term. Doesn't have to be only expiring deals. Yanmark and Ryan in Edmonton. Noel and a couple pieces in Florida. Philip Dano, 85 overall, 20 points in 43 games. He is on the block here in LA. Yafalo, Arvidsson, and Edler as well. Arvidsson, eesh, tough numbers for him. Yafalo, Har. Minnesota, we see Spurgeon, Brodeen, Dumba, Felino, a ton of players on the block in Minnesota, despite them being a good team. So it wouldn't really make sense for them to trade a guy like Spurgeon. But we were thinking, remember, uh, Matt Dumba might be an interesting long-term piece for us. He has 15 points. He's a plus 14 in 37 games. Fits deep pairing two. I know it doesn't matter much, but Matt Dumba is extremely interesting to me. It's just that it's it's a fair bit of value, and Minnesota is also a winning team. But they know Dumba's probably not coming back. Montreal Canadiens, Armia and Byron, uh, no one on Nashville. Severson still on the block here in New Jersey. Pretty solid numbers, tough plus minus, and higher trade value. 85 overall, Howla, Tatar. Islanders, nobody. Rangers, Robertson and Skinner. Senators, nobody. Flyers, Ryan Ellis, Justin Braun. Yeah, okay. Penguins, some prospects including Pickering, Wenberg, Tanev, a couple pieces in Seattle, Achari in St. Louis, a couple prospects in Tampa, some prospects in Toronto, Ekman, Larson, Mikhaev, lots of uh, heavy contracts in Vancouver, uh, prospects in Vegas, prospects in Washington, and prospects including uh, Rutger McGrory and Chaz Lucius here in Winnipeg. Also, just to show you any goalies who are on the block, Eric Comrie and Malcolm Subban in Buffalo. Dustin Wolf in Calgary. That's very interesting. I know he probably wouldn't be a guy that's looking to trade in the real world, but very interesting. Low starter potential, 73 overall. Ranta on the block in Carolina, and so is Kachetkov. Again, another guy that probably wouldn't be on the block in the real world. I don't know if I'd want to go for him, but Antti Ranta, 84 overall, making $2 million just for one on expiring deal. Maybe he's a long-term kind of guy, but we already have James Reimer. It would probably have to be a guy who's younger and a longer-term piece. It wouldn't be if we're buyers. It would, this is just for you to make note of in case you say, let's go the route of stocking up the shelves of prospects. Nedeljkovic on the block here in Detroit, 85 overall on an expiring deal at 3 million. Probably not coming back with Huso there and Kosa in the, in the uh, pipeline. So Nedeljkovic would be interesting. And his numbers, by the way, are pretty solid. All right, another thing to keep in mind. But do we want a guy who's ready right now or do we want guys down the road? Because Kakinen is doing just fine few different ways that we can think about it. Varlamov on the block in New York, 86 overall, an expiring deal. Penguins have Lindbergh on the block, medium starter, 74 overall, 23 years of age, but all right, Philip Lindbergh on the block, so is uh, Gautzia there, low backup. 
Grubauer on the block here in Seattle. 5.9 for five more years. 83 overall, 31 years of age. As always, a staple in franchise mode. Hugo Elnfeldt, always on the block in Tampa Bay. 75 overall, medium starter. And there you go for the goalies on the block. No one too crazy aside from the ones that I made mention of. And that'll do it, ladies and gentlemen, the first half of our first season here in San Jose. A lot of questions for us with such a juicy draft class around the corner. Do we start selling off our guys who are maybe over, you know, performing above where they should be? A couple of franchise guys in the draft. This guy Chow is going to be medium elite. We know Fantilli is going to be medium elite as well. Manlo, Jaeger. There's a lot of great players, including the guys who are created, right? But even aside from them, Benson, Dvorsky, so tempting. But at the same time, we're a winning team right now. We're second in the division. We're 10th in the NHL. I'm going to be very curious to see what the assistant general managers have to say about this one. So thank you very much for taking the time to watch and taking the time to comment for those of you who do. Whether you watch or you watch and you comment, you are very much appreciated. Leave a like if you enjoyed the start of this franchise mode series. And be sure to also join us over on the Discord server where, yeah, we're talking our franchise mode series. We're also talking your franchise mode, the real world of hockey, and much, much more going on. So we'd love to have you join us there as well as here on the channel if you haven't subscribed already be sure to do so so you won't miss out on any of our franchise mode uploads or any other nhl 23 content but i will look forward to seeing you again in the next one where we will have the second half of year number one and we'll have to figure out what kind of direction we're going in both in the short and longer term as we are currently on track to be a winning team maybe even a division winning team here in year number one